Immediately when the toy is presented, Marty reaches voluntarily. We see him bring his hands to his feet, and at six months, we would also see hands to knees and feet to mouth. These movements help to mobilize the pelvis and increase pelvic femoral mobility. His lower extremities are still abducted and externally rotated. Marty is able to symmetrically lift his upper and lower extremities against gravity while simultaneously investigating the ring. Marty exhibits disassociated upper and lower arm movement as he grasps and explores the toy by turning it over several times in a well-coordinated motion. Owen's ability to hold his head in midline has improved since we last saw him at four months. However, he rarely demonstrates anti-gravity movement and little abdominal activity is evident despite his apparent visual attention to the toy. Improved abdominal activity would provide the core control to allow anti-gravity flexion toward midline. Owen's extremities are abducted and externally rotated with occasional hip flexion and extension during kicking movements. Owen's upper extremities are also abducted and externally rotated with movement primarily on the surface. With assistance in positioning his lower extremities and activating his abdominals, Owen is able to briefly maintain his knees up toward his chest and in midline. He is then able to initiate a burst of active abdominal flexion, lifting his pelvis off the surface. However, he is unable to maintain, grade, or play in this position as expected at this age. Marty visually follows and reaches then rolls independently and easily through side-lying into prone, initiating the movement with his lower extremities. Both the side-lying posture and the movement through side-lying to prone provide Marty with increased asymmetric tactile input, which is important for eliciting proper head and body writing reactions. Marty chooses not to stay in a side-lying position as he is too interested in play and exploration. Owen's arms rest in a position of passive wide abduction. Owen visually engages with the toy presented, but this visual interest does not translate into arm movement, even as the examiner attempts to facilitate rolling from back to side. Even when the examiner attempts to entice him with a toy, we see the shoulder extension preventing rolling forward to his side. Owen's unbalanced neck shoulder and back extension prevents forward movement of the head and arm to assist rolling to his side. Here we see Marty on extended arms, supporting his weight while turning his head to follow the toy. With increased weight bearing on extended arms, Marty has developed increased extension down to the lumbar spine and hips. This also brings his lower extremities into a strong, extended position. Prone pivoting in an attempt to obtain a toy is also seen. In this maneuver, Marty demonstrates disassociated movement of both the upper and lower extremities, which aids in right-left stability and control. Increased scapulohural disassociation is evident in weight-bearing and weight-shifting. The quick and immediate use of reach and grasp upon presentation of an object allows for many opportunities to improve control and coordination of both the shoulder and hand. Marty participates in varied play schemes of banging, turning, mouthing, transferring, and repeating sensory motor exploration with his hands. Marty also demonstrates a palmer grasp with increased digital participation, including thumb abduction and extension. By six months, the prone position is typically chosen for play due to greater head, shoulder, and trunk control. Here we see that Owen is still greatly challenged when prone. He demonstrates lower extremity kicking, but does not possess the stability required for upper extremity play. Owen still positions his elbows behind his shoulders, making it very difficult for him to use his upper extremities to assist in head and trunk lifting. 
Without adequate stability, Owen is unable to use his vision or hands to explore his environment. When pulled to a sitting position, Marty is able to respond quickly and he assists in the maneuver by actively flexing his neck forward and lifting his head from the support surface. He also uses activity in the upper extremities and abdominals to assist in the pull to sit. At six months, Marty is able to efficiently assist in the pull to sit and attain this position with good symmetry. Unlike Marty, Owen is only minimally able to assist in the sit maneuver and demonstrates complete head lag until he reaches the upright position. Though we would expect a six-month-old to assist with upper extremity pulling, we do not see this response present in Owen. Once upright, he is then able to right his head and hold it in midline briefly before it falls into lateral flexion. Now at six months, Marty has stable head and trunk control with strong extension through the thoracic spine. Marty is able to reach with one arm at a time, as his wide of support gives him greater stability in the lower extremities and freedom of upper extremity movement. With emerging postural control against gravity in sitting, Marty is also able to lean forward, reach, and then rewrite his trunk over his pelvis to attain the upright sitting position. He is also able to sustain a gross grasp on objects while utilizing a variety of upper extremity movements, though these movements are still ungraded in the sitting position. As we saw at two and four months, Owen is willing to maintain his head upright and in midline when held in supported sitting. The examiner must still support him high in the chest to allow him to sustain his head upright. His trunk extension is poor and he does not have a solid balance of trunk flexor and extensor muscles to stabilize himself. His upper extremities come down to his sides, but Owen's ability to activate his vision and his reach to explore are not observed as he needs to work so hard just to remain upright. Marty now demonstrates full sustained extension in his neck and upper thoracic spine which continues down through the hips and legs. This is precisely what we would expect when testing horizontal suspension in a six-month-old. Owen is able to lift his head symmetrically in midline and extend through the upper thoracic spine and hips. He maintains the response only briefly. Protective extension is easily and quickly elicited as Marty is tipped forward towards the surface. He props immediately on one upper extremity and is already active with the opposite extremity reaching for a toy in front of him. When attempting to elicit a protective response, Owen does not bring his upper extremities forward to the surface to protect himself. A full protective response would be expected by six months. His decreased anti-gravity neck and trunk strength makes it impossible for Owen to sustain the head and trunk extension needed to free the arms to come forward during this maneuver. Marty demonstrates immediate sustained weight bearing on extended lower extremities. His hips are still slightly flexed and somewhat behind the shoulders. His head is free to turn and look around, and his arms are coming down to his sides. The upper extremities are still assisting in the posture, as evidenced by the strong upper thoracic extension. Owen does not initiate or sustain weight bearing when placed in supported standing. We have seen in nearly all the anti-gravity positions, head and trunk control are still a challenge for Owen. This inability to sustain weight bearing makes it impossible for Owen to develop control in standing because he is unable to align his head, trunk, hips, knees, and feet 
in the vertical.